Hi, my name's Emma Bresky. Hi, I am Sakima Pencrook. Today, we are here with Mango Encounters. Yes, talking about all things self, care, love, acceptance, and... Self-empowerment yeah, as well. all that jazz. This is Mango Encounters, a sound space that promotes enriching connections and candid conversations around fashion, culture, and wellness today. In this episode, we welcome Emma Bresky and Sakima Peng Crook. Super excited for this conversation today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> On each encounter that we've had with each other, it's it's always been conversations of a similar vein. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think it's perfect. We're having this one here now. Having this one recorded. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because I feel like that's all we ever talk about when we're like either in line on a runway. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Sakima and I are both models, so. We are indeed. And um, we first met on a campaign shoot for a mutual friend mm. in which Emma was behind the camera on this occasion. Yes, this time I was behind the camera. And I just remember you like walked onto set and I was like, wow. <laughs> and then you were like dancing and you like had your, because you're an incredible dancer. And very flexible. <laughs> I remember you like had your leg over your oh, head yeah. and we were like... <laughs> I was feeling stretchy that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, work. <laughs> I guess we should start by talking about what the current state of, of mental health looks like today. This is the big one. This is the big one. Mm. This seems to be an increasing focus for us all. The fact that it's um, it's very much out in the open now compared to say back in the day yes back in the t- <laughs> back in the times of perhaps our youth or our, or our parents i mean where did you grow up so i i grew up actually mostly in eastbourne on mm. the southeast coast near brighton okay um born in the midlands um but kind of traveled around the country as yeah. i grew up i think it would be really interesting cuz we both had different like experiences probably growing up because I grew up in Thailand Ah. and so like I feel like mental health in certain cultural practices were very much like in the forefront of my upbringing Mm. but I didn't realize what it meant you know what I mean so like going to the sea like going swimming in the ocean that was a form of like sort of like trying to take care of my mental health yeah as a child. Definitely cleansing the body as yeah, well. Or reconnecting like, with nature. Yeah. But um, I didn't realize that's what it was back in back then. And mm. I grew up with a, a brother who has mental health um, issues. Like, well, I don't know if we can call them issues. How do we or call who, them? To, you never know what's like the correct yeah, way to like word things now. I know what you mean. I mean, what mental I health. Say? experiences mental health i mean we all yeah. experience mental health because i feel health, like right? issues is such a weird word yeah. i don't actually like that word issues i understand what you mean with that i and similarly i grew up by the sea mostly um my mum experienced varying states of of mental health so i grew up with with her experiences and learning through her with bipolar psychosis mm, etc yeah. and it was only as i got older that i I began to see those things more for what they were in terms of yeah. her choice to to bring us by a seaside town so that we could yeah. be by the sea, mm-hmm. so that we could go for big nature walks. Your so environment's so important. Very much so. And I think because when, when I was a kid, I didn't realize that. So my brother has um, borderline personality disorder okay. and, and uh, Tourette's, but that's not mental health. That's a neurological disorder, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we were kids, we had no idea. You know, and other kids had no idea. So Mm. then when you experience, he would experience so much bullying at school. And it was just like one of those things where we couldn't figure out what it was. Yeah. And on top of that, for him as a child, having no idea. What is actually going on 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 within himself. himself. And it's like now I'm like, wow, we actually have so much more accessibility to understand these things. And it could be better, I think, still. Mm. Um, but at least now those conversations are being had around mental health, which is, I think, you know, the first important step. Back then, you don't know that, like, what your parents are going through. You're just a kid. It's... You're just like, I don't like my mom and dad. <laughs> 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 I hate them right now. <laughs> but they, they themselves are probably going through things that back then 
didn't know how to communicate either. Yeah, there wasn't a support for that. There was wasn't looking after children. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> because also that's just what what was expected. Yeah. I know that myself in my life and in the in the states of the world that we've experienced, I've experienced anxiety and depression and things from low self-esteem to uh, suicidal ideation at times. Like, it's really been a full spectrum of, mm. of mental health in mm. my own experience, and I know that. And just having that awareness is mm. also, like, that is um, that is a very empowering thing. If I'm going through, say, like a dip in my own happiness mm. or inner peace, mm. you just kind of have to sometimes... I sometimes have to be like, okay, let me forget myself and my ego right now. Let yeah. me remove yeah. remove me out of this and like try to look from a logical point of view maybe. Yeah, something more detached. Yeah, and then I'm like, how okay, there's a way to to heal myself from the inside out. Mm. It's not like it's hard. It's actually I think it takes a lot of courage and bravery to take on the steps of like finding your like inner peace and working on your self love. For sure. N- not I think this whole idea, oh, you know, just like have your self love day. It's not as easy as that. It's not it's not just face masks and candles yeah. and <laughs> it takes a lot of courage and bravery to really do the work. To really do the work, yeah. It's... And to really look deep within and kind of like look in the mirror and face like not just the good parts but also the parts that you want to work on and the bad parts or the the parts that are scary now as well with these conversations of mental health we can now make choices that allow us more freedom Mm. rather than having to follow a set prescribed rule book Mm. if it was uh, i think everyone's mental health is it's not a one size fits all mm. it's definitely individually catered to and now we have kids telling us how to fix our (laughs) I find like before when we were kids, we had no clue. Now you're seeing kids with iPads being like, make sure you take care of your mental health. Yes. <laughs> As the <their> first words. <laughs> and it's wonderful. I know. <laughs> I mean, I was on the phone to my um, to my stepmom the other day and she was telling me that she found my little sister who's seven uh, meditating in her bedroom. Oh, I love <laughs> that I think, so much. I think there's conversations at primary school now about about mental health and about meditation and about your own peace. Yeah, and I feel like that's also an uh, interesting one to to talk about and being being able to sit still and quiet with yourself. I would say it's one of the one of my personal essential tools or methods of developing self-acceptance or allowing self-acceptance and and developing my self-expression has been in the times of quietness, of stillness, of slowness, you know, away from, especially living in in London, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, Mm. um, away from the voices and opinions of your friends, co-workers, loved ones, etc. I think it's in that. Especially in the industry that we work in. (laughs) Especially in the industry that we work in, where so many people have so many opinions about us and how we should be or how we should look, etc. I think it's really important to sit with yourself, check in with how it is that we're really feeling, right? Yeah. And from that, that's the the voice I find that guides me the clearest. Yeah. I found with my own personal journey with self-acceptance and um, self-care, Knowing when to say no mm. is so important, especially when we're in an environment that's such a yes, a yes place. Yes. And sometimes, you know, we say yes because we think, oh, the hand that's feeding us, like why, why bite the hand or, you know, bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. But then I've always said, why, why take that on if the hand that's feeding you is feeding you? Something you don't want. That's the same with mental health, I feel. Feeding the soul mm. and the mind and your body with like s- s- nourishment that is like of abundance of like you know of of um of uh of of sustenance yeah of, of healing sort of it doesn't I don't want to say like feed yourself positivity because that's not what I'm trying to say it's more like feeding yourself like 
the nutrients that you need in order to vibrate on a higher fe- frequency, mm. if you know what mm. I mean. And in some ways, I know I know what you mean about the like feed yourself positivity and like love and light. But what, also, yeah. you know, if you if you're wanting to develop a a positive life, if you're wanting to live a peaceful life, consuming things that are in that direction that make you feel positive mm. and not just positive in that moment. One hundred percent. Not just those quick fixes or. You yeah. know, the, the quick dopamine releases, yeah. but things that are, are long-lasting. I think everything in a balance. Mm. Because I also think people can ad- get addicted to positivity. For sure. And the sort of, like, trend that it's it's, it's Good setting. Good vibes only. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, like, my mom's like, no, 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 I don't want to hear it if it's not positive. And I'm like, mother. That's you not gotta real get, life. Yeah, you got to get comfortable with the duality of both positive and negative. Mm. Because if you can't handle the negative with a, a sense of calm or, or, or understanding that, that, you know, we can't be positive all the time, it's more like just not dwelling and sitting in that right. negativity for too long. For sure. Like when you injure yourself, you're not just going to sit there and be like, it's okay. It's going to fix itself. And I'd broken my leg. But no, you go and get it healed. You go you to the doctor. You take get the it necessary healed. steps. Yeah, you... it's all good. And then, yeah, you're, you're, you're back to being... To being fully healthy again. But yeah. It's, yeah, it's a combination of, of a, like a positive mindset or a positive mental attitude when faced with, with challenges or adversity mm. or, or struggles um, and taking steps as well. From the reality of that of that place, but not yeah. not ignoring that it you know. I feel like the only way out is by working through it. I sound like a Hallmark card, don't I? <laughs> I sound like I've just Googled loads of quotes and just like <laughs> spitting quotes right now. <laughs> These are good quotes, <laughs> mantras, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Mantras Affirmations. Affirmations, exactly. A lot of the time, I feel like. We are the ones that, you know, like we look at all the issues in the world, all the problematic people in the world, and we're like, why? (laughs) And why do we have the we, Mm. um, you know, black POC, queer, Mm. everyone in all these different like marginalized communities have to be the ones pushing to have their voices heard. Right. Um, And I feel like it's it's important that we have these conversations because I know like um, you do quite a bit of activism work. Yeah, yeah. It started for me actually with the first London Trans Pride, which I believe was in 2019. Mm -hmm. 2019 was the first London Trans Pride. And it was Lucia Blake who was the founder of that. And she had asked me to speak and I'd never spoken publicly or anything before. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, Lucia. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Lucia Blake for that, <laughs> for putting me on and and pushing me to to use my voice. And then it was BLM and then the intersection of of BLM and trans rights. I mean, everything is integrated. It's it's all connected for sure. And one of the things that I was really wanting to focus on during that time and now is that we can all advocate. We can all We all are, I believe, activists. I think there's so many layers to activism. For me, it wasn't like I didn't wake up saying I'm an activist. It was more like other people told me. It was kind of that, yeah. It was kind of like I was like, okay. I guess I missed things. I've literally been introduced as an activist, and I, and I think a part of me panicked Mm. because I was like, I don't feel like I'm doing direct active activism Uh, uh, you know what uh. I mean in the beginning I felt like it was when I first heard that like oh you're an activist and I was like I don't know about that because I guess my mind was conjuring up me like on the front lines like tying myself to a tree and I'm not doing that so I was like I'm an imposter Uh, you know yeah I get that I get the very beginning of all especially when we've had like these these people that we've learned about in schools, right? Or these great people. You have like already an idea of what you think an activist should look like and should be and sure. what they should do. And I was like, but activism isn't my isn't my actual like job. It's not my identity. Yeah. And I think after 
you know, coming like to terms with things, I was like, right, I guess activism, there's many layers to it. And I think just caring, just being someone who cares about something. Simply that. Is, um, is, a, is a, one of those layers of activism. Um, I think it's important to stay true to yourself and your passions and try to stay true to your values. And it's not an easy thing to do. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't continue to try. So the I... most rebellious thing you can do if it's in, if you've got the capabilities to do it or the, you know, mm. the right head, the right mental health space to do it is, I think the most rebellious thing to do is to be, yeah, to speak your mind and speak your truth and and be an activist in your own way. What I was saying when I was giving speeches during BLM is that I believe we are, are all activists or at least we all have the capacity we all have the capacity to make change mm. in our day to day lives whether it, that's yeah. you know smiling at a stranger on the street exactly. it can be so simple you can even word it different you know I was telling people I'm not an activist I'm just a very enthusiastic uh, chatter <laughs> I'm just a very enthusiastic person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Uh, I and mean, like, I've put it before. It's just like I have, I'm passionate about about ch making change. Mm. I'm passionate about seeing making the Making those world. conversations, those tough conversations that a lot of the time aren't heard, mm. aren't recorded on a podcast. Right. I feel like people expect us to be like in the spotlight with the sort of like things that you care about mm. but you don't have to no. some of my most like i'm quoting in my with my fingers yes. some of my activism yeah. has literally been conversations i've had with my father mm. you know what i mean yeah those tough conversations that you have to have in everyday life that in itself i think doing what you can to just at least spark a conversation and provoke thought mm. Even if someone might be like clashing with you, that's a form of activism. For sure. In my opinion. Choosing peace. <laughs> choosing peace is activism. <laughs> choosing love is activism, honestly. And that took me a little... It took me a while, for A sure. while to, to become aware of that separation between people. <laughs> I'd just like to live in a world that, that, feels, that feels peaceful. Yeah. And sometimes it's not always about our voice in particular um, or our individual voice but sometimes it's about a collective voice a collective voice supporting each other is cool uplifting 100%. each other is cool passing the mic passing the mic passing it forward mm. that's something that I was taught very early in in my in a previous life I was a dancer full time I still dance now mm. um, but I was given some really incredible opportunities in that time and I was given that by older dancers who were experienced and established in their careers. And they said, I'm doing this because I believe in you and because I expect you to pass it forward. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've always taken that with me. If I have an opportunity to, to share, an opportunity to, to raise someone else's voice. That's why we're here that's together. That's why we're here, exactly. And it's wonderful to, to be a part of that. I'm yeah. grateful for that. Yeah, I really, I believe that too. Sometimes I feel guilty, though. Like You know, when, when you're successful, uh -huh. I almost feel like I need to sh this needs to be shared. I can't uh -huh. enjoy this all to myself. I need to be able to bring, to bring people, people in along, and, with, it, along yes. with that. Yes. Um, do, you know, do you know what I mean? I hear what you mean. So there doesn't, I mean, I... Because we, wor we work in an industry that almost contradicts that sometimes. Yeah. Because it's so competitive. And it, everyone wants that bag. And everyone wants to be that. The, the favorite, the face, the star, the moment. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I think a lot of people don't know how to to remind themselves that, you know, we're all, it's not a competition. This individualistic. Ego. Ego. I, I, I must be at the top as, as, a, as a one, <laughs> lone, whatever. It's. And once you get there, it's lonely up there. Yeah. I've had moments in my career where my ego has taken over. And then I've had to really just like stop, think for a minute. I'm like, who is this person? That's not me. Yeah. Why am I comparing myself to someone else? Why am I, you know what? It's not my moment. Right. It's this person's moment. Right. Let's, let's like let's be celebrate happy for and them. enjoy this person's moment. You know, we'll get our moments. 100. Divine time, baby. <laughs> exactly. Everything in the right time. We've had our moments. We'll continue to have our moments. I also think we're in an industry where everything has to be now. What's next? What's the next thing? Uh, 
But then when you stop and you find you sit with yourself, like you were saying, when you when you sit quietly with yourself, mm. and I feel like that's what the pandemic did for me, to be honest. Definitely for a lot of people. You reflect, wow, remember where I came from, where I've been, the things that I've done to get to where I am today. Wow. Right. And I don't think we celebrate ourselves enough to to really think about the journey we've had. Something that I've started implementing this year as well from this American lady who's this blonde American lady who's written some really great books and talks about motivation. We're basically terrible with names, but, aren't we? It's names, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's talking about um, about changing habits and behaviors, rewiring your brain, that kind of thing. I really, I really love that kind of that area of of self help or self discovery or self development. Let's say. Um, one of the things was the five second rule, which I thought was fab. What's that? Which is if you're procrastinating or if you're struggling to make a decision, it's better to do something rather than nothing. Yes. So five. Don't, it's not about perfection. It's not about perfection. It's just about doing. Doing, and then you can course correct along the way. Mm. We all make decisions that that might not have felt like the perfect decision in the moment. But you it don't works have to out. be perfect to do it good. Doesn't have to be exactly. You just have to try. Mm. <laughs> you just have to be willing to try and to do something. So counting down from five and then making a start on whatever it is. Mm. But the other thing that she was talking about was high-fiving yourself in the mirror, <laughs> which I don't do because... I, I don't even do it with the mirror. I just I sit there like, yes, <laughs> yes, we're, high, we're clapping. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to put my... <laughs> Most, for the most part, I'm I'm quite moisturized uh, and oily. I don't want to put my oily hands all over my mirror. Exactly. But I will wave at myself in the mirror, or I'll give myself a thumbs up, or I'll blow myself kisses. Or is I'll... this what you call radical self care? <laughs> this could be a part of radical self care for sure. What is what is radical self care? What is radical self care? So, radical self care is is a term that I first discovered from Angela Davis. Uh, Finally, a name we remember. <laughs> a name we definitely <laughs> remember and a name that I hope that any and everyone listening knows. Or if you don't know, then please do some research into Angela Davis. Get to know some incredible work on intersectional feminism, on on self-love and self-healing. One of the one of the beacons for me in my learning process. Um and she spoke about radical self-care in, it sounds radical by today's standards, perhaps. Um, but I believe it's, it's just self-care. When we take time to take care of ourselves radically, as Angela would say, we, we gain our own autonomy. We gain our ability to choose our actions. We gain our our freedom back mm. we gain our health we gain the respect of our bodies and our minds and the gifts that we have yeah. in this human experience in these in these human vessels so radical self-care looks like for me personally it looks like yoga yoga it looks okay. like meditation it looks like a gratitude practice it looks like saying nice things kind things caring things to myself mm. and to those around me. Mm. It looks like taking time. It looks like eating nutritious food that is delicious also. Mm. It looks like working on my sleeping patterns. <laughs> Don't even get me started. My doctor was like, do you not sleep enough? And I was like, literally never. I, I don't know when was the last time I reached REM. <sighs> and um, and then they were like, well, yeah, we can see based on your blood results <sighs> that like your cortisol levels are so high, which is the stress, the hormone. stress hormone, which is now attacking my sex hormones. So it's causing an imbalance in my estrogen and my testosterone. Whoa. So that they're both really low and that causes possibly infertility. I never thought I wanted, I don't know if I want children. But you'd like but to like, have the option. The idea that. that like because of my sleeping health, mm. it's disrupting the rest of how my body works. So we've spoken a lot about interconnectedness and connectivity and and support systems and 
I know that you have a good support network, a strong support network. You've definitely spoken about that from from your home life, establishing that sense of community and sharing. But outside of that, like as a as an adult, as a grown up <laughs> navigating this world, how do you how do you cultivate, how do you build yourself your your support network? Well, I'm so lucky in the sense that I was I grew up surrounded by such a strong um community of strong Filipino women la, la. <laughs> who are feisty and they mm. speak their mind and we gossip like there's no tomorrow but we gossip for the right reasons and and um I think having that sense of like um you know having that yeah having the people that I think I think also when we're growing up or like when you're young especially when you first get into like the scene mm. you're so fixated on trying to be popular or like trying to be out all the time and making friends and networking mm. but then you forget actually like I don't need all of that I just need those that I cherish the most mm. who are my close mm. and my beloved you know and it's like having that it's not about quantity it's about quality in your friendships in your families like your chosen family mm. you know it's so important to surround yourself with like people that you know understand and have that res mutual respect and um, value the same things. Or even if you don't agree on everything, it's just important to have that, that respect, I think. I believe so. And also, I'm so comfortable in my with myself. Yeah. Which I think is hard, but I don't know about you. I, I, I've become addicted to being on my own. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I find it really hard to be in a relationship with anybody because I'm like, I do being on my own so well. Oh, yeah. Sometimes dating myself is better than going on a date with someone else. I love taking me on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I love taking myself on a date. Yeah. I, I know that I'm going to be on, on my best behavior with myself. And I found when I was able to find that um, feeling supported by myself and having myself as my own support network, I was able to then choose a better support network outside of myself as well, mm. if that makes sense. It also, it sounds like, and what it feels like for me is, once we take that time to figure out what it is that our needs are, what, what our, your expectations what our are. expectations are, what our values are, the things that we hold dear to us, it's easier to to gravitate or magnetize mutually those people into your life mm -hmm. who on the same sort of frequency yeah same frequency same values caring about similar things or at least having the desire to mm. to care about the things mm. that you care about mm -hmm. or protect those things mm -hmm. that you care about right so when we were younger i was like it was exhausting trying to like be, be everyone, everyone everyone's friend <sighs> and then you're like i actually don't know anything about you i just know you really like tequila literally <laughs> Gosh, yeah. So, can we really be say we're friends? I don't we, know. I don't. I don't know if that. <laughs> I mean, I can say wholeheartedly. Actually, that does not constitute a friendship mm. for me. Friendship is a word that, increasingly, as I as I go on through my years of life, holds holds more value and and meaning. I think the idea of friends when I was younger was similar. Just having lots of friends. Yeah, and having, having all the friends. Having surface level fun. Having surface level fun was, was easy. Which is great when you're young. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great when you when you also don't have any, well, or fewer responsibilities, yeah. let's say. Um, but then it comes into adulthood and you're like... You know what? I'm not boring. I'm just not 21 anymore. Right. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I... Now I think as I cultivate more slowness, more stillness, more more time to to appreciate the simple things. I enjoy to appreciate mm. those simple things in other people as well and I I enjoy to surround myself with people who are Everyone has a different pace. Exactly. And everyone likes to to like travel together on the, in their similar paces, yeah. right? Like if someone's running in life, and I can't catch up. Like, why do I need to be trying to catch up with you? I'm like, go good, run, good, go, go run your. It. Yeah, <laughs> you go run. Yeah, you, go, you do what you want at that speed. I'll take my time. Right. I'll uh, I'll take my time on foot right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'll stop and smell the flowers at okay, this point. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. That's you're, you're, that sounds like a really lovely journey. <laughs> I'm very much a slow and steady wins the race. Always. If there is a, a race to win, that Facts. is. I yeah. mean, you know, I always say it's not a competition, but if it was. But if it was. <laughs> I'll I'll win by slowness. Yes, <laughs> I'll win by patience and by by. It's ins- it's very it important, and I feel like there's more sustainability in that, because everyone just wants it. Like, thinks that okay, we need to be no 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 no. Wow, I feel like we've had such a profound conversation. This has but been we've really got wonderful. Very, and we could go on for days, but we've, we've got limited time. I believe, and our time is is most likely up up. <laughs> But you know what? If you guys listening have been enjoying it, yes, you can just tell Mango Encounters to bring us back. We will happily continue to talk for for many more hours. Yeah, it's up to you. So <laughs> like and subscribe and listen now. Mango Encounters, a podcast curated by Mango.